بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وبعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته My dearly respected Jamaat al-Muslimin Elders, mothers and fathers, brothers and sisters and beautiful children also our viewers on Facebook and YouTube, as well as all the respected viewers of Hilal TV, I greet you all with the universal greetings of love, peace and mercy. It gives me great pleasure to present to you our speaker for today, who really needs no introduction, the Honorable Dr. Imtia Suleiman from Gift of the Givers, who will be speaking to us on a beautiful topic, Palestine, the power of faith. And without further ado, I also want to welcome a special team from Yemen who has come with Dr. Saab. Uh, the team from Yemen, Ahlan wa Sahlan Bikum Ayyuwa Lahibba, Nawartum Cape Town, Mashallah, Wa Nurahibukum Ila Madinatil Kaab. Without further ado, we call upon the Honorable Dr. Imtia Suleiman to address us. Falitafaddal Mashkura. Jazakallah, Maulana. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Very special welcome to my team from Yemen who've been working under great difficult circumstances for many years. We're one of the largest, if not the largest, organization in Yemen dealing with all types of crisis in the country. So very special thanks. Even Anas Alhamati is here. He's a man, if you know, got Yulani Kok released the hostage. He was the one that negotiated for a release. And Sultan, the man that guided him, is also here together with two other members of Yemen and they will be touring parts of South Africa to give feedback on all our projects in, in Yemen. But today, of course, it's about Palestine. First of all, may Allah bless everybody who's made dua in Ramadan in the last six months, the rallies, the walks, everything. It's been amazing the kind of reaction the world has got because of everybody standing up together. The question is, whose faith is being tested? Is it the Palestinians' faith? Is their faith being tested? You mean to tell me after 75 years, Allah doesn't know how they're going to respond? Does it need another 75 years to see how they're going to respond? It's not about them. It's about everybody else in the world. Because he knows their last breath will be husband Allah wa nakul wakil. Children, youth, adults, old people, no matter what happens, husband Allah wa nakul wakil. The faith is not about them. It's about everybody outside them. How do we respond? You see, they've been tested already. And they've won the test over and over and over again. The test of Allah's mercy is not what they're going through. The test of Allah's mercy is how we respond to what they're going through. Where in the history of this country or in the history of the world, when my own experience, when my children were three, they didn't know the word Gaza. They didn't know the word Palestine. My three-year-old granddaughter walks through the house with a Palestinian flag on her shoulder and she says, free, free Gaza. What an achievement is that? Did we say that when we were small? never happened in our time. My four-year-old grandson walked into the shop and the M&M and &M, M &M man was sitting there, the to sweet machine. And he told my daughter, I'm coming just now. He's four years old. So she asked him, where are you going to? She said, I'm going to beat up that man. So she asked why? He said he's part of the boycott. We can't eat that sweet, so I've got to beat him up. That kind of training and development is unique. It's the first time that's happened in our life. You see, the Palestinians and people in difficulty know that the, Allah, the promise of Allah is always true. Kat aflahal mukminun. The believers must eventually win through. It doesn't happen overnight. It takes time. When will come the help of Allah? The help of Allah is always 
near. If Allah helps you, none can overcome you. If he forsakes you, who is there after that that can help you? In Allah then, let believers put their trust. You see, they know all these things. They even speak Arabic. They know all these things. But how much do we understand it? We have been tested. People have been silent and have been terrified and don't want to speak. No, no, people mustn't know that I did it, that I gave money, that I spoke, spoke, stood out, and my business will get affected and I'll get harmed. Who provides for you? Who looks after you? Is it the Zionists? Is it the Israeli lobby? Who? What are you afraid of? You see that one man who's walking with the board was right. He said, I thought Gaza was under occupation. The only free place in the world is Gaza. The rest of the world is under mental occupation. And this war is about freeing the world, not to free Gaza. They're already free. They're not enslaved by fear, like the rest of the world is enslaved by fear. They've always been free. Not afraid in any way, because that is the power of their fate. So what did we need to achieve in this war? Four things. Four critically important things. Number one, as a Muslim brother, you always have to stand for the brothers in difficulty. That's Islamic teaching is clear. When one part of the body feels the pain, all of us feel the pain. But that is now questionable. Do all of us really feel the pain? Or do we just stick the register? Do we make dua with consciousness and mindfulness? Or we just make it because we have to make it? How does it affect your soul? That when you go to bed, you think of your own success and your own happiness. You see, it hit me hard. My daughter is eight years old. At night, she needs a nice hot bath. So she has a hot bath, a shower, clean linen, nice pajamas, hot plate of food, something to drink, book to write on, calm environment, phone to play with, all kids play with the phones, everything to do. Do those children have anything like that? Or they're sitting and starving and wasting away, and yet they say, full faith, Hasbunallahu wa naqbal wakil. When Ahmed Abbasi, the head of my office, got killed, I just came out of theater. And I said, How fortunate am I? I'm in a five star theater. What five star medical personnel? What five star nurses? What painkillers? What anesthetic? What antibiotics? What dressings? What a lovely bed, what hot food, a clean ward, in my case a private ward, my own bathroom. They operated on their people without anesthetic. A doctor had to operate on his own child to cut the child. And the child died because of pain. Do we reflect how fortunate we are? This war is not about the Palestinians. It's not about their fate. It's about our fate and our gratitude and our consciousness. Are we still going to walk around mindlessly and heedlessly like what they saw of the people in Dubai? Or seen people all over the world like the Palestinians don't even exist. Yet you went through the month of Ramadan and you fasted and you go for Umrah and you go for Hajj and you pray five times a day and even ten times more and Tahajjad and Owabin and Chasnamas and everything you pray, but you are totally removed from the consciousness of people that are suffering. What kind of a Muslim are you? Lip service is useless. You need to feel that in your heart. You need to feel a pain in your heart as if it was your own child and you and your family. That dua would it Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, the first point was when the one part of the Ummah feels the pain, we need to give them hope. 
So when you painted the mural in Boa Cap, when you walked through the streets of Cape Town, when you made the zikr ceremonies, when you read for them, they are fully aware of what you are doing. And they send the messages, South Africa, thank you very much. Not Muslims only, because it's not only the Muslims who stood. All those who are, are human beings, who believe in humanity, stood, may Allah bless all of them, in this country and all over the world. And that said, that gave us hope. We know there's nobody with us. We're going to do this alone. But knowing that you are standing with us and praying for us, we are not alone. It's very hard to be alone. It's very hard to be left with no support. You know, as an aside, we go to many countries where there's disasters. And the people come to us and we tell them South Africa. They say, Africa, you came from Africa. There's people in our country who are so rich, they don't even think about us. They don't even care about us. Even if you brought nothing and just came, we feel full of hope because you are true human. Not me, the teams. You are true human. That's the feeling and they have the love they have just because you went and you thought about them. You can't appreciate that if you haven't been a disaster. We're doing this for 34 years. So the first one was to give them hope. The second point to strengthen that hope is to put something inside. Whether it's water, whether it's food, whether it's medicine, whether it's something. So on the 7th of October, when the bombs fell, I sent a message to my teams immediately in Gaza. I said, not when, I said an attack took place in Israel, not on the Gaza side. When that happened, I said, prepare for hell. This guy, Netanyahu, the number one terrorist in the world, is now going to go, his, his megalomaniac, narcissistic, egoistic personality is going to drive him crazy. And he's going to go inhuman with his bombing. He's going to go totally mad. You guys are in serious trouble. Make sure you purchase everything from the supermarkets, from the wholesalers, from the stores. Give people the vouchers. We've got a big name in Gaza. Everybody knows who we are. And start giving people the vouchers to start buying stuff. Whatever you can get. For the first 60 days, they bought everything that was available inside. It's not everything that we wanted, but you couldn't get it. But whatever was available, food, blankets, mattresses, hygiene packs, medical equipment, medical supplies, types of medicines, they delivered everywhere as much as they could to the different hospitals. But they said, we can't move. There's no fuel. The cars get bombed. The ambulances get bombed. The roads are damaged. We can't go further. It's very, very difficult. We are in a crisis emotionally and psychologically because when we move out, we don't know where our families are. We don't know what state they are in. We don't know what's happening to them. Hasbunallah wa nakmul wakil. We will do our job and we will deliver. Day seven, I told them, expand the team. Some of you are going to die. I'm sorry to say it so frankly, but that's the reality of life. We all die. And I said, expand the team. They started laughing. We Palestinians, don't you know we know that? We already expanded the team. We already got more people to take over from us in case something happens. So for 60 days, they delivered in every corner. And then the electricity got cut off. Look how innovative they are. Resilience comes from faith. So the electricity got cut off. They came and they brought the generators. Ordinary people, you don't know who they are. They just brought the generators. We said generators need fuel. So from their cars, they siphoned off the fuel and said, take this. And our three desalination plants were working. And eventually, Israel, occupation forces, knocked out one plant and the water tanker. There were two left. And then eventually the fuel got finished. They had enough just to pump the desalination plant. They got innovative. Don't use a truck, use a donkey. A donkey doesn't take fuel. So the donkey went around and they started giving the water everywhere they could. They couldn't go too far, we need to understand that. And they also started taking hot meals to the different centers. And the hospital needed air mattresses. 
and old people in homes. These are not homes, these are broken down buildings. Whole window, door wall is gone. We delivered food parcels as much as they could. And they did all that as much as possible for 60 days. Our six-story childcare center is gone, bombed. Our health center in Kuzah is bombed, gone. The preschool that we supported in Kuzah is bombed, gone. And gone is Ahmad Abbasi. In the week of November, the second week of November, he sent a message and he said, I'm not running anymore. This is an indignified way to live. They tell you to go to the south and then they bomb you on the way. I'm taking my wife and my three children and my 30 family members and I'm going to stay in my apartment in Gaza City. And I'll wait for the bombs to come and die as a non-combatant martyr. But I will not die this other way of running. But whilst I'm alive, I will do my duty and responsibility and serve the people of Gaza. That 13th of November, I got a premonition that on day 40, something's going to happen. The morning of day 41, 16 November, as he came out of Fajr Salah, they bombed him and his brother, a doctor, who died. My team members, I told you earlier, husband Allah, who and Akhtar Wakil, they don't know the condition of their family members. They don't know what's the condition. My team members have lost 175 family members in this war. But they haven't given up. They haven't stopped. Husband Allah, who and Wakil. That's the power of their faith. So we took stuff in for the 60 days and then we made arrangements for the support of our government. We took in three trucks, took 20 days to take in three trucks, took 13 days to cover 30 kilometers. And then we put in another eight trucks and then we put in another five trucks and now we're busy with another 10 trucks preparing for them to go in. And while that's happening, we're feeding them on the outside in Rafah. Those that couldn't go in after October 7 happened. And those that are coming from the hospitals. And those are staying in the Sinai. We're looking after them. We're looking after the students in Egypt. And we're looking after those in the hospitals. Whatever we can do. And we're looking at a long-term plan. If that the border opens up and the ceasefire comes, there's 200 highly skilled medical professionals in South Africa waiting to go in, in our teams. And 30 psychologists and psychiatrists waiting to go in. So that's the part of showing them the hope. The third part, which was critical. You see, we can't keep doing this thing every time. 2009, they bomb. 2014, they bomb. 2022, they bomb. Take a medical team, go inside, give some food, come out. It has to stop. And the only way to do that, the most important war in the world, is information. Information. You can't reverse 75 years of mental occupation until you start informing the world. And by Allah's grace, you've seen the protests in every part of the world. People are not stupid anymore. People are not bluffed anymore. Truth will conquer falsehood. That is Quranic promise. Allah says, I am with the oppressed. You will find me among the oppressed. Injustice will lose. I will fight injustice. And truth will always conquer falsehood. His words have come true. Truth has come across the world every single day. You're seeing more and more people standing up and protesting and speaking out. In this country, my own experience, not one, hundreds of people. We were completely pro-Israel. Today, we are Palestinian. Non-Muslims, I'm not talking about Muslims. I'm talking about non-Muslims, saying we are totally Palestinian. The table has changed. You see, I have to lose a lot of life. But that kind of 75 years of occupation, of settlement, of collective punishment, of genocide, of imprisonment, of torture, of rape, of cutting out food, water, administrative detention. You can't give us 75 of the years of that without hardship and difficulty. They bury it because they have the faith. They have freed the mind of the whole world. We're not fighting Israel. We're fighting Zionism. We need to destroy that. And the final point that supported that faith was what this country did. You see, the Zionists are totally arrogant. Nobody will challenge us. Nobody can do anything to us. A country that can't even keep the damn lights on, that can't deliver water, 
that can't fix a pothole, that can't get things right, stood up, and people tried to spin it, and they said it's election day one votes. What kind of a dumb answer is that? Are there 15 million Muslims in South Africa that's going to give them votes? That they're going to win an election? Well, all our votes added together makes nothing. What are they talking about? Yes, there were 15 or 20 million Muslims, then it's for votes. They did it on principle. And when you do things on principle, the baraka comes. The baraka will, that our country will come right because of taking a principle stand. What value was there of helping Palestine? Please tell me. I'm a blunt guy, sorry. Have they got oil they can give us? Do we have a trade relationship with them? Do we get gold and diamonds from them? Do we have commodities from them? Do we get technology from them? Do we get any kind of trade with them? No, we get nothing from them. We have to give them things for free. So why risk your country? One trillion land left in the first five days. The interest rate on the loans went up by 3%. The land got knocked. People want to start boycotting us. Do what you want. We're not afraid of you. We were the one upstairs. He is with us. Do what you want. All of you in your shops, don't be afraid to speak out. That's the least you can do. When you fear Allah, other people fear you. And the Quran is very clear. Strike terror into the hearts of your enemies and Allah's enemies. Don't waste your time praying salah here and fast and go for Umrah if you're afraid. Then your faith has not transferred into action. Don't be afraid. One of those lawyers asked me, what did we achieve by going to the ICJ? I said, what kind of a dumb question is that? What did you achieve? You made 60 other countries not be afraid anymore. And they took Israel to the ICJ. It's not what we achieve. What uh, uh, what victory is given or what rule is passed, what's important is to tell the Zionists, we are not afraid of you. When you do that, you break the entire spirit. In the past, you should see Israeli flags all over this country. Both supporting on the highway, Israel. No Palestinian flags anywhere. All the media columns, front page, letters, opinion, radio stations, TV, all about supporting Israel. Show me to what extent that's happening now. Palestinian flags everywhere because people are not afraid. Nicaragua, how big is that country? Took Germany, a superpower, to the ICJ. They've already won the war. They've already won the war, you see? The last point, 196 days of bombing. In 1967, in six days, they took Egypt, Jordan, and Syria in six days. They were fighting armies from three countries. In six days, they depleted them. This is not a war. When there's a war, you need two armies. There's no two armies here. There's the Western world, imperialism, America, UK, Germany, France, Canada, Australia, Zionist money, capital funding, and the dead Muslim states. Hypocrites, genocidal partners, complicit. Billions of dollars of aid, weapons and veto power. F-16s, tanks, heavy artillery, missiles, ships. 196 days all you did was kill innocent people and buildings. And you strengthen the faith of a people who are not afraid of you. All they have is resistance and small guns. And they've challenged the mighty power of the entire Western world. Let me finish up by saying, if the powers are the other way around, in five days, the white flags would have gone up in Israel. Jazakallah, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Takbir. Allahu Akbar wa lillahi alhamd. Shukran, jazakallah, uh, Dr. Imtiaz, for a very inspirational nasiha. We, I'm sure everyone feel like just get on the plane and go to Palestine, to Gaza, and support our Gazan people. But inshallah, Masjid Al-Quds is embarking on a very special campaign, and that is we're going to raise funds galore, inshallah, because we want to be in the forefront to reconstruct Gaza, inshallah. And we will team up 
with the gift of the givers, and those beautiful organizations are committed to that cause to help our people in Gaza to reconstruct the entire Gaza. We will start, inshallah, with establishing hospitals and much needed healthcare facilities, which is foremost in Gaza, inshallah. So, Doc, Masjid Al-Quds hereby today, in front of everyone, give you the pledge that we will start this special campaign with you and your mighty dynamic team, inshallah, and all those interested to help Gaza, Masjid Al-Quds will be in the forefront, inshallah. Amen. And then, of course, I've got a few announcements. Uh, we have been asked to make dua for Marhum Noor Ali, brother of Nizam Ali of Alegante. Also dua for Al Marhum Khalid Hartley, the brother-in-law of our Anwar Umar. And then all, for all the deceased, may Allah grant them Jannah to Firdaus. And also for some of our sick people, dua shifa for Mrs. Aisha Bibi Parker, the wife of our trustee Siraj Parker, who has had an operation. We ask Allah to grant the full recovery. Amen. Also, dua shifa for Haji Salahuddin Pankakar and Nasrin Parker, Pathan, the daughter of Dr. Ilyas Parker, and all the sick people at home and in hospital. Allah grant them shifa and kamila. Amen. And then, of course, um, Masjid Al-Quds today will be having the famous, what is now known as Masjid Al-Quds Akni. The Akni will be available today and it will be in support, inshallah, for our daily afternoon madrasa, inshallah. So kindly get your Masjid Al-Quds Akni after Juma, inshallah. And then I would like to announce that I will be running a four-session Hajj class preparing our Hujjaj for the five days of Hajj. It will be this coming Tuesday night after Ishai and Wednesday night after Ishai and then also next week, Tuesday night and Wednesday night after Ishai. So it will be two Tuesday nights and two Wednesday nights. It's a four session on the five days of Hajj, which will be held upstairs in the auditorium. And there's only 75 seats in the auditorium. So it's first come, first serve, inshallah. People have to register or already Register me by WhatsApping me, and then I will reserve your seats, inshallah. That will be the four-session Hajj class on the five days of Hajj, inshallah. And uh, I just want to announce to you that uh, immediately after Juma, Dr. Imtia Suleiman will have to leave immediately. So if he can't afford to, to greet anyone, please excuse us. He needs to catch his flight at 3 p.m. at the airport, inshallah. So immediately after the Farad Salah, Dr. Imtiaz, you have the permission with your team to leave immediately, inshallah. And the entire Jamaat wish you well. Amen. Ya Rabbul Alameen. Before we have the Adhan, there's uh, some signs for me to tell the people to kindly stand up, step forward, fill up all the safs. Wherever you see a, a space in front of you, that space is yours. Please. It's yours, Doc. If we must know the merit of standing in the first half, we will fight each other to stand in the first half. So I don't know why everyone is. Yes, uh, also to remind you that on the 6th of May, you have heard about the Reverend Munder Isaacs, the Reverend, the, the Bishop of uh, Bethlehem, who alhamdulillah has been very much in the forefront of the struggle. He will be on the 6th of May, he will be at Masjid Al-Quds, inshallah. So I'm already uh, giving the announcement now and will remind you again, closer to the time, 6th of May, Reverend Munder Isaacs will be uh, at Masjid Al-Quds, inshallah. Shukran, Jazakallah Khair, and Bait Ramakasi. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu an la 
ilaha illa Allah Ashadu an la ilaha illa أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله
ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم اعز الاسلام والمسلمين واذل الشرك والمشركين رب اختم لنا بالخير برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين والحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمه الله تعالى وبركاته الله اكبر الله اكبر الله اكبر الله اكبر اشهد ان لا اله الا الله اشهد ان لا اله الا الله اشهد ان محمدا رسول الله اشهد ان محمدا رسول الله حي على الصلاه حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي خلق السماوات والارض في سته ايام ثم استوى على العرش اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له شهاده تنجي قائلها من النيران واشهد ان سيدنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله المبعوث في اخر الزمان صلى الله عليه وعلى اله واصحابه صلاه وسلاما دائمين متلازمين الى يوم الدين وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا فيا امه التوحيد اتقوا الله ولتنظر نفس ما قدمت لغد واتقوا الله ان الله خبير بما تعملون قال الله تعالى في القران المجيد بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ان هذه امتكم امه واحده وانا ربكم فاعبدون وقال تعالى بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر ان الانسان لفي خسر الا الذين امنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر صدق الله مولانا العظيم الحديث قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم خير الناس انفعهم للناس او كما قال صدقت يا سيدي يا حبيبي يا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم بارك الله لنا ولكم بالقران العظيم ونفعنا واياكم بالايات والذكر الحكيم اقول قولي هذا استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم ولوالدي ولوالديكم ولسائر المسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات فتوبوا الى الله انه كان غفارا اللهم صل وسلم وزد وتوان ودفت وبارك جلالك وكمالك على زين عبادك واشرف نبادك سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد وصحبه وسلم سلم رضي الله تبارك وتعالى عن كل صحابه اجمعين الحمد لله الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا كما امر والصلاه والسلام على سيد البشر اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله قال الله تعالى في القران المجيد مخبرا وامرا قولا كريما ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا ابراهيم وعلى ال سيدنا ابراهيم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا ابراهيم وعلى ال سيدنا ابراهيم في العالمين انك حميد مجيد ورد الله عن خلفاء الراشدين امير المؤمنين سيدنا ابي بكر الصديق وامير المؤمنين 
المؤمنين سيدنا عمر بن الخطاب وأمير المؤمنين سيدنا عثمان بن عفان وأمير المؤمنين سيدنا علي بن أبي طالب رضي الله تعالى عنهم وعن بقية الصحابة والقرابة والتابعين وتابع التابعين وتابعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم اجعل هذا البلد آمنا مطمئنا وسائر بلاد المسلمين أجمعين فاغفر لنا وارحمنا وعافنا واعف عنا واحفظنا يا الله يا الله من كل بلاء الدنيا وعذاب الآخرة اللهم انصر المسلمين والمجاهدين والمستضعفين في فلسطين وفي غزة وفي كل مكان يا مولانا يا رب العالمين اللهم ارزقنا صلاة في المسجد الأقصى وهو حر عزيز برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين يا ذا الجلال والإكرام ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وأدخلنا الجنة مع الأبرار يا عزيز يا غفار يا رب العالمين اللهم أعيد المسجد الأقصى إلى رحاب المسلمين إلى أخوي المسجد الحرام ومسجد النبوي المدني الشريف آمين يا رب العالمين عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يأمركم بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر ولذكر الله تعالى أعلى وأولى وأعز وأجل وأتم وأهم وأعظم وأكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقم الصلاة Kindly fill up all the salves, heels on the line, shoulder to shoulder please. الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله أن محمد رسول الله يا رسول الله إلى الفلاح قد قامت السلاة قد قامت السلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله استغفر الله Allahu Akbar Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahmanirrahim مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضال بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فاذكروني أذكركم واشكروا لي ولا تكفرون يا أيها الذين آمنوا استعيدوا بالصبر والصلاة إن الله مع الصابرين ولا تقولوا لمن يقتل في سبيل الله أموات بل أحياء ولكن لا تشعرون 
ولنبلونكم بشيء من الخوف والجوع ونقص من الأموال ونقص من الأموال والأنفس والثمرات وبشر الصابرين الذين إذا أصابتهم مصيبة قالوا قالوا إنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون أولئك عليهم صلوات من ربهم ورحمة وأولئك هم المهتدون الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد واصحابه وبارك وسلم 
الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين اللهم أنت السلام ومنك السلام تباركت يا ذا الجلال والإكرام سمعنا وطعنا غفرانك ربنا وإليك المصير اللهم تقبل من القليل وسامحنا بالكثير ولا تؤاخذنا بالتقصير اللهم إنا نسألك إيمانا لا يرتد ونعيما لا ينفد وقرة عين لا تنقطع ومرافقة نبيك محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم في أعلى جنان الخلد اللهم جنا من النار اللهم جنا من النار اللهم جنا من النار يا مجير يا مجير يا الله يا رب العالمين اللهم اغفر لحينا وميتنا وشاهدنا وغائبنا وصغيرنا وكبيرنا وذكرنا وأنثانا اللهم من أحيته منا فأحيا للإسلام ومن توفيته منا فتوفه على الإيمان اللهم اهدنا الصراط المستقيم اللهم اهدنا الصراط المستقيم اللهم اهدنا صراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعم الله عليهم من النبيين والصديقين والشهداء والصالحين إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وأصحابه وبارك وسلم اللهم اغفر لهم وارحمهم وسكنهم في الجنة اللهم اغفر لهم وارحمهم وسكنهم في الجنة اللهم اغفر لهم وارحمهم وسكنهم في الجنة وتجاوز عنه الشيئات وعشرهم مع النبيين والصديقين والشهداء والصالحين ألا إن أولياء الله لا خوف عليهم ولا هم يزنون الذين آمنوا وكانوا يتقون سبحان ربك رب العزة أما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين وال الحمد لله رب العالمين